What's up, guys? It is Monday, January 27th, and we are on the uh, last week of our month, first month of our vlog. Was a good, interesting month, and uh, but we're up, so uh, let's keep going. So uh, we just keep stick with one hand history today because uh, there weren't that many interesting spots over the weekends. So we'll set up the hand. Uh, we have middle position two. We have this uh, older gentleman who uh, earlier was telling other players, "I would never call his bet." His is referring to me. I would never call his bet. You, if you call his bet, you'll find out what I mean. So we'll call him Never Call. Never Call has 800 in middle position two. Then we have to his left is a uh, weekend regular. I think he's a winning player, but uh, plays a little loose sometimes. So uh, we'll call him. He plays a lot of hands that are awkward. So uh, we'll we'll call him Hawk. Hawk has around just two hundred fifty dollars left. Then uh, I am in the cutoff, and I have eight hundred dollars. So the play goes: uh, never call limps. Hawk limps. I look down with king of club. And Jack of Spade, King Jack off suit. So I wanted to disguise my range a little bit, so uh, I raised to uh, 25, a little bit on the smaller side. And then uh, it folds to uh, the blinds fold, never call, calls. Then Hawk calls as well. So the pot is now around $70. And the flop comes Ace of Diamond. King of Spade, Jack of Diamonds. Good flop for our range, right? So uh, it checks around to us, and uh, we see bet on the larger side, $65. Really not expecting much. And then to our surprise, never call, calls. Weird, right? So uh, this, is, this is starting to go be kind of weird. Then it comes to Hawk. And Hawk goes all in for two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Well, so then we're thinking, what kind of limping calling ranges in late position do you guys have here, for you guys to call raise and then be calling a big bet and then jamming? This is a weird spot. So the pot is four hundred forty dollars now, and we have to call two hundred twenty-five dollars more. But we still have hawk, uh, never call from behind. So decision time, right? Let's, uh, let's go ahead and think through. When we bet 65 and never call calls, it's a pretty strong range. Um, the bottom of it, we're not gonna, he's not going to call with a, uh, a naked ace here, just a pair here. He knows our range is strong. He knows that the board will run out bad for his ace. So he's not calling with an ace here. So the best thing we could put him on is um, uh, the draw, a flush draw. There's a uh, king high flush draw still out there. Um, there's a flush draw with a gut shot. There's a pair plus flush draw plus gut shot. But there's also queen 10, which is makes it straight. And queen 10 of diamonds is very likely in his range, given the way he plays, where he's trapping now because he's not concerned with any cards. So we put him on a flush draw at first. But then when Hawk goes all in, Hawk's playing range is much wider than Never Call's playing range. So we have to then assume that Hawk is more likely on a draw. Then if Hawk is more likely on a draw, then that means that Never Call is more likely on a made hand. So then uh, we thought about it a little more and we ranged them and uh, everything's sounds about the same so it makes sense so uh we decided to fold yep we folded and then uh never calls calls and then the board runs out the uh ace of clubs and then a blank of four of uh let's just say four of spades and then, so, then Hawk flips over 8-4 of diamond for just 
uh, eight high flush draw. And then never calls, flips over queen ten of hearts for the flopped nut and tries to trap us. So we dodge the bullet, we range players correctly, and we knew we made the correct play. We dodge bullets. So uh, that's the hand of the day. We'll uh, hopefully we have some more cool spots tonight's session. Other than that, let's uh, hit the gym and uh, let's go for day two of day five days this week. See you then. And we're back. So uh, there's this kid at Windstar. Very nice kid. Uh, you could say he's almost like a Windstar well. Comes and either loses a lot of money or wins a lot of money. Most of the time loses a lot of money. But a uh, very nice kid. So I've always encouraged him. You're young. Take care of your body. Don't get stuck into the uh, poker life trap of uh, gluttony, sloth, and obesity. So uh, one day, we were playing poker and uh, he couldn't help himself. He saw me, but he could, still couldn't do it. So he went to a Dairy Queen and he got an ice cream and he came back and he sat down. And he tells me, I know, I know, I'm not supposed to be eating this. I can't help myself. So I just smiled and said, go ahead and enjoy. So after he eats it, he puts, he's done. He looked, uh, I asked him. So how was it? And he goes, eh, it was okay. So I told him, like, was it worth it? And he, like, he goes, uh, not really. So that's the story of all of our daily lives, right? We, these desires and these craves manifest, arise out of nowhere, out of, we see something or we hear something that it triggers certain craves and desires. And right away, we give in to those craves and desires. We don't stop for a minute to think whether it's good for us, whether it's bad for us, whether we should or not. We just give in. And uh, throughout our day lives, we give in to one desire after another and, and chasing after another. And for Mason's case, most of the time, once we gratify or satisfy our sensual desires, what we realize is that it wasn't that great and we really didn't need it or we really didn't want it but we just couldn't help ourselves we had to have it so it's it's a sign of mental weakness right you you know something's bad for you you know you shouldn't do it but you do it anyways and it goes over and over and then once you do it you develop this sense of personal guilt like you just wronged yourself so then what do you do you carry this guilt inside and then in order to mask this guilt and to avoid it, you ch chase another sensual desire. You go after another crave, a bag of chips, an ice cream, a drink, or another snack, and then you or entertainment. So you're constantly doing this convoluted circle of guilt, gratification, guilt, gratification, and you're destroying your body throughout your days. And you, you don't have any sense of discipline to work on yourself. So this is why we suffer mentally, because we do these things to ourselves, we hurt ourselves, we fill ourselves with guilt, but we never take the time to step back and contemplate on the things we do. We just let our mind drag us everywhere. So we're, we're the slave and the mind is the master. So we got to stop somewhere, right? We got to need a, a training ground. And I've always said that poker is a good training ground because 
it allows you to practice everything that you could in real life in a more condensed environment. So the next time you have a desire, stop for a minute and, con and reflect on that desire. And maybe just hold out for 30 minutes, 15 minutes, maybe, or an hour. I, like at Winstar, whenever I have that crave for ice cream, I try to hold out for an hour. And then what you're gonna realize is that once that time comes, you're gonna, that desire is no longer there, right? Desires and crave come and go. And if we could, when it does come, if we could be mentally strong enough at that moment to step back and wait, do not give in. We're not saying we're not gonna do it, but we want to show that we have that discipline to wait and to hold and to be patient. And every time we not give in to our desires, it builds us that mental toughness a little bit stronger every time. And if we keep working on this, when the time comes that certain, it's not desires, but even more stronger emotions like rage and anger and hatred and all that, when those emotions manifest and arise, we also have the mental strength to step back and not give in to those emotions. And that's where mental toughness starts, by, not, by starting with the small things. Don't give in to those small desires. Step back and wait for a little bit, and then evaluate later if you want to or not. And if you do, then go for it and enjoy it. But at least you did it with intention and evaluation and reflection and not compulsion. And that is where we want to step away from is stop compulsion and to start reflecting and acting on with intentions. So that's it for today. Uh, I hope I'm motivating you guys to just start working on yourself. This is, a, this is not anything informing, it's more inspiration. I hope to inspire you to stop hurting yourself. See you tomorrow.